Praise the Lord. Church, I said, praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. And I pray that the Lord will open your eyes to see how to conquer, how to overcome, how to sail through all the storms in our lives in Jesus' name. The storms of life will not drown you. You will not stop your journey halfway. Tonight is such a deep, interesting study. And I pray you'll be awake. I will be awake. Oh, you said you're a preacher, you have to be awake. You know, there are preachers who do so while they are preaching. And sometimes, uh, you know, I've heard of somebody that does like that preaching, and then he fell down. And I had to take him out of the pulpit to, you know, continue uh, the service. But I will be awake. And you will be awake in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this study. Thank you because you are still present in the midst of your people today in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray no storm will stop any of your children in Jesus name everything we study today we are praying oh Lord it will work effectively effectually in every life in Jesus name we will not study in vain the study will benefit everyone I pray, Lord, you increase the faith of every one of us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We're looking at Mark chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 35 all through to 41. Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. Let us pass over unto the other side. And when he had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow, and they awake him. And say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he rose and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. There will be peace in your life. And the wind ceased, it has to. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that she have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Those verses I've read to you, the seven, look at verse 35. The passing over to the other side. Passing over to the other side. The same day, when the evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over to the other side. Verse 36, his presence in the ship. That is, as they were all in the ship, his presence was also there. 
that's in verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the sheep. He'll always be in your boat. He'll be in your family. He'll be in your heart. He'll be in your life. His presence in the sheep. Verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the sheep, so that it was now full. Three, the peril of a great storm. The peril of a great storm. Number four, verse 38. And he was in the inner part of the sheep, asleep on a pillow and they wake him and say unto him master carest thou not that will perish that's their perplexity about his sleep the storm was great the storm was high their lives were in danger and he was asleep on the pillow they were perplexed Carest thou not that will perish? Their perplexity about his sleep. Verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. Somebody shout amen. amen. And the wind of your life ceased. And there was a great calm. That's number five, the power of our Savior. No storm will withstand the power of the Savior, even tonight in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 40, and he said unto them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? The problem of their shallowness. They had been following him all these years and they had seen the great things he had done. And he also had given them the assurance that the power of God will be with them. And he was telling them, you could have done that. You could have silenced that wind and you could have stopped that storm. Your faith will rise. The problem of their shallowness. Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The perception of his sovereignty. The perception of his sovereignty that he rules he rules the sea he rules the storm he rules the souls of men he now perceived his sovereignty tonight we're looking at that passage the great event that reveals both the humanity and the deity of christ on the one hand the passage reveals the humanity of Christ. He was tired and he slept. That's the humanity. But then the passage reveals the deity of Christ. He rose up from his sleep. And then he commanded the wind, peace be still. Only God could do that without praying to another person. But with his own authority as the sovereign God, he said, Peace be still, the deity of Jesus Christ. As man, he was tired and he slept. As God, he controlled the wind, controlled the waves, controlled the sea. Tonight, the topic is great calm. Through the master's intervention. Great calm. Through the master's intervention. There will be intervention in your life. 
Say good amen. amen. The Lord will intervene in every area of your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Great calm. Whatever the storm, great calm. Whatever the challenge, great calm. And whatever the storm the devil is raising up in your life, in your family, in your Christian journey, in your progress to heaven, the Lord is going to bring every storm to a calm in your life in Jesus' name. The things that perplex you and the things that trouble you and the things that want to stop your journey halfway, the Lord is going to deal with everything in Jesus' name. Great calm through the Master's intervention in our church we'll see the lord's intervention in every family we'll see the lord's intervention his power will avail for you his presence will avail for you his promise will avail for you come great come through the master's intervention three things we're looking at number one the personal proclamation of our infallible Christ. The personal proclamation. He himself said it. And he said, let us pass over onto the other side. And what he proclaimed and what he declared, there is no Satan, there is no devil that can contradict that, that can make that to fail. Christ is infallible. Christ is irresistible and Christ is incomparable. If he says anything in promise, in power, with his presence, it will be fulfilled in your life. The personal proclamation of our infallible Christ. Number two is perfect peace in an irreconcilable crisis. The crisis that throws up, you couldn't reconcile that with what he had said. He had said, let us pass over onto the other side. And then a crisis arose, irreconcilable. And the disciples couldn't understand, how could a, how could a storm come? How could a crisis rise up when Christ in authority and power had said, let us pass over unto the other side, irreconcilable. And yet, the Lord is going to grant us perfect peace. Number three, the prevailing power of our irresistible Christ. Christ is irresistible. His power is irresistible. His prophetic prediction is irresistible. And he has that prevailing power. And the Bible tells us very clearly, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You'll find him sufficient in your life, even today and this year and beyond in Jesus' name. The prevailing power of our irresistible Christ. Point number one. Tell me number one on that side there. The personal proclamation of our infallible Christ. Look at Mark chapter 4, verse 35. And the same day when the evening was come, he says unto them, let us pass over onto the other side. That's the proclamation that Christ himself made personally. The personal proclamation of an infallible Christ. Let us pass over onto the other side. Look at the end of the storm and look at chapter 5 verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. And they came over 
unto the other side of the sea. His word will always be fulfilled. His promise to you will always be fulfilled. His declaration, proclamation will always be fulfilled. It will be done in your life in Jesus' name. If Christ has spoken, it will come to pass. If Christ has announced it, it will come to pass. If Christ said it, it will come to pass. The sea may roar, the storm may rage, but the words of Christ will be done. Satan and sinners may be furious. His word, all the same, will still be fulfilled. That's the sights I see, terrifying sounds I hear, and all those sights and sounds may feel the horizon, but all the same, the word of God, the word of Christ will prevail. Tempest reaching, billows rising, demons threatening, torrents of anguish, Heights of anxiety, depths of grief, winds, waves of wrath, all may shoot up their angry look. But all the same, all that Jesus Christ has said will be fulfilled. The wind will obey his voice. The waves will obey his voice. Whatever he has said will come to pass. Did he tell you something in his word? It will come to pass. Did he give you a promise in his word? It will come to pass. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away you need to say amen to that one the sky may roll over the earth may be in turmoil the sea may roar challenges may come in your community or anywhere but whatever Jesus has said must and will be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus said, I and my Father are one. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. At the word of the Father is infallible, as the word of the Father will always be fulfilled, so the words of Christ also will always be fulfilled. Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the Son of man that he should repent, as he said, and shall he not do it, he will do it. As he spoke in, and shall he not make it good, behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. What are we learning from here? Jesus has spoken. The storm cannot reverse that. Jesus has declared, let us pass over onto the other side. And the winds and the waves cannot reverse that. Whatever promise the Lord has given us in his word, no one can reverse it in our lives. Your life will be exactly as Jesus has promised. What he paid for on the cross of Calvary will be fulfilled in your life. 
all right, will be fulfilled in my life. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 18. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and will put my words in his mouth. That's the prophecy looking forward to when Christ will come. I will raise up a prophet like unto thee, Moses, and I will put my word in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Whatever he said, the Father put it in his mouth. Let us pass over onto the other side. And the Father knew about that. That word will not fail. Look at Acts chapter 3. For you to understand that what we read now in Deuteronomy is referring to Christ. Acts of the Apostles chapter 3. And I'm reading from verse 20. In verse 20, here is the declaration of the word of God. And he shall send, tell me the name, Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration, restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Look at this. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. That's talking about Christ. And when he says, let us pass over unto the other side, you'll hear him, you'll believe him, you'll get ready to pass to the other side. And whatever you see on the way, you look away from that because you will get to the other side. You'll not remain on that other side of weakness forever, on the side of confusion forever, on the side of weakness and powerlessness forever. You're going to move on to the side of victory as Jesus has decided and declared concerning you in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 46, I'm reading from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 46, reading from verse 10. It says, declaring the end from the beginning. Before they got there, he said, let us pass over onto the other side. And he declared the outcome. Even as they were beginning the sailing out. And the outcome of your life, victory, power, fulfilled destiny, and joy at the end. The Lord is declaring, let us pass over onto the other side. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Let us pass over. It's not yet done. And Satan thought he could turn that upside down and erase the storm and the wind against the word of the infallible Christ. Satan has failed. Satan will always fail. And in your life, and in our church, and in our families, Satan will fail. Because he declares from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. What's the pleasure of Jesus Christ as they were in the boat for Peter 
for John, for James, for Matthew, for all of them, is to get to the other side. He chose them to bear fruit. He chose them to make progress. And when he said, let us pass over to the other side, he knew that nothing will drown them in the midst of the sea. I see you on the other side. I fellowship with you on the other side. I rejoice with you on the other side. Look at verse 11. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executed my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, and I will bring it to pass. Underline that in your Bible. I have spoken it, and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed it, I will also do it. Performance in your life. Great wonders in your life. The coming of the storm in your, in your life in Jesus' name. In Isaiah chapter 55, I read from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. For the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth. And make it bring forth and bird, that it may bring and give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please. And I, it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. It will be fulfilled in your life. The word is the greatest sin in your life. The storm is not the greatest sin. The waves are not the greatest sin. The contradiction of the enemy is not the greatest sin. And the opposition of Satan, of society, is not the greatest thing. The word he has spoken, let us pass over onto the other side. That's the greatest thing in your life. And it will crush and destroy every other thing that rises up in opposition or contradiction in Jesus' name. Jeremiah. Chapter 1, verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou as well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. He will hasten his word in your life. It will be performed. I said it will be performed. Ezekiel chapter 12, reading from verse 25. Ezekiel chapter 12, verse 25. For I am the Lord, I will speak, and the word that I speak shall come to pass. Forget your perplexity, forget your doubts, forget your unbelief, forget the waves, forget the storm. God has spoken. Christ has spoken. He has spoken into your life. He has spoken his promise into your life. Forget every other thing you see, for I am the Lord. I will speak. And the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Verse 28. Therefore say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. 
Even Satan cannot delay the fulfillment of his word in your life. The storm will not delay the fulfillment of the word in your life. All the trouble, all the perplexity, carest thou not that will perish? Nothing will delay the fulfillment of his promise in your life in Jesus' name. There shall none of my words be prolonged anymore, but the words which I have spoken. He has spoken already. My word, the word which I have spoken shall be done, says the Lord God. The Lord stand amen over there. Yeah. Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading from verse 5. We're told, let your conversation be without covetousness. Let your conversation be without conflict. Let your conversation be without cowardice. Let your conversation be without fear. Let your conversation be without unbelief, without any harassment in your spirit. Be content of such things as she have, for he has said. He has said. Is he talking to you? I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. He will not leave you. In a time of need, in a time of problem, he'll never leave you, he will never forsake you. So that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I'm going to say that for myself. The Lord is my helper. Say that again for yourself. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Say amen for that one. Your persecutor or Christ who is greater? Your opposer or Christ who is greater? The storm or Christ who is greater? Your sickness or Christ who is greater? And all the things that want to stop your journey halfway and Christ who is greater? You have conquered. Look at verse 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. If his word was fulfilled at that time, his word in your life, in my life, in our lives, will be fulfilled at this time. Second Peter chapter 1. Verse 19, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. I want you to underline those two words, more sure. More sure. It says we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Now, Peter was talking about Christ now. He's gone to the cross. He shed his blood. He's made a full and final sacrifice. And he sealed every promise he gave with his blood. And heaven has registered that. He said, when he said, let us pass over unto the other side, he had not died. He had not paid the price for that. He had not sealed the promise with his word. But now we're on this other side of the cross. Everything Jesus said in power, what he said in promise, now he has sealed with his blood. If the words before the cross could not be contradicted 
and could not be reversed. How he bowed now that he has died on the cross of Calvary. Look at this again. We have also a more short word of prophecy. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn. And the day star arise in your heart. The day star arise. What's the day star going to arise? Where is the day star going to arise? Where is the light going to shine? All your darkness will vanish away. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And if the word spoken by those prophets of the Old Testament became fulfilled, how much more Christ, who is greater than all those prophets, his word will be yes and amen in your life. Point number two now, perfect peace in an irreconcilable crisis. Mark chapter 4, we're reading from verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind, a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full while Christ was asleep. By the way, why, how could he sleep in such a storm? Well, he slept on the strength and the pillow of his word. He has said, let us pass over unto the other side. And he was the creator of Lucifer, of heaven, and earth. And that one that became Satan, he created him not as Satan, as Lucifer. And he knew if he said anything, it was done. That's why he went to sleep. And all that water coming into the boat was nothing. Nothing to you. Nothing to me. Nothing to us as a church in Jesus' name. Why could he go to sleep? He had told Peter, John, James, and others, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they had not become fishers of men. He was going to leave the work in their hand and they were going to bring thousands into the kingdom. And he knew that word will still be fulfilled. All this time is child's play. It's a test. It's a trial. It's a temptation to see whether you will cry, whether you will give up, whether you will say, the end has come. My end has not come. Your end has not come. Why did he go to sleep? Because in the Old Testament, it was prophesied, they pierced my hands and they pierced my feet. He knew he will die on the cross and not in the sea. And because he knew that, he knew his destiny. When you know your destiny, you'll not be afraid of the mosquitoes or the cockroaches because the fire of the Holy Ghost will burn them up. That's why he went to sleep, but he didn't understand. And then it says in verse 38, and he was the, in the hinder part of the sheep, asleep on the pillow. And they awake him, and they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They wanted him to be anxious like they were anxious to be worried as they were worried. And because he rested, and because he was calm, 
And because was not afraid like them, they said, Carest thou not that we perish? Of course he cares, you will not perish. And he arose and rebuked. He arose and rebuked, tell me. He arose and rebuked. He didn't even first of all rebuke his own disciples. You disturbed my rest. Why did you wake me up? How is it you are afraid? He first of all solved the problem. Before he rebukes you for your littleness of faith, he will first of all solve your problem. Before he corrects your shallowness, he will first of all solve your problem. And tonight, those problems are solved. My problems are solved tonight. He rebuked the sea and said, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? The crisis that arose could not be reconciled, but Christ's plan. Christ's promise, Christ's purpose, Christ's presence. That's why they went to him and they said, Master, teacher, Lord, deliverer, carest thou not that we perish? By the way, that's not the best model or pattern of prayer. It was the prayer of anxiety and the prayer of worrying and people say if you can worry why do you pray if you pray why do you worry but he arose and he said peace be still and i tell you on behalf of the lord tonight in your life in your family your place of work on the road in the village anywhere you go peace be still in Jesus' name. In Him, by Him, through Him, there is peace. Number one, there is present peace. Number two, there's the promised peace. Number three, there's a priceless peace. Number four, there's prevailing peace. Number five, there's perpetual peace. Number six, there is perfect peace. Number seven, there is surpassing peace. Confusion is over in your life. Trembling, fear over in your life. There will be peace. Isaiah chapter 9. We're reading from verse 6. Isaiah chapter 9. Reading from verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Tell me what you see here the Prince of Peace. If he is in your boat, there will be peace. In your family, there will be peace. In your heart, there will be peace. Whatever was happening at home before you left, as you get back home, there will be peace in Jesus' name. Verse 7, of the increase of his kingdom, of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Look at John chapter 14. Verse 27, John, chapter 14, verse 27. 
peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you. Lord, I receive. Lord, I receive. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. No more fear. In your heart, no more fear. How do we get to the other side? No more fear. How do we journey on until the end of the way? No more fear. What shall we eat and what shall we drink? No more fear. How shall we overcome the enemy? No more fear. There will be peace in your life in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 14. I read from verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and, tell me, peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. You are in the kingdom, there will be peace in your heart. There will be peace in your family. If you believe that, the peace has come. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14. For he is our peace. He Christ, he the Savior, he the Redeemer, he the one who died for us on the cross of Calvary to take on our confusion and commotion away. He is our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Enmity against your life, abolished. Enmity of Satan, abolished. Enmity of the roaring lion abolished. Enmity of anyone standing in the way that you are not going to make progress. You will not pass through this way. The Lord has cleared them out of the way. <laughs> Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And then in verse 16, and that he might reconcile both to God, the enmity between you and God, and the wall of demarcation between you and God is broken down. That he might reconcile both unto God in one body, by the cross, having slain the enmity thereof, and came and preached and pronounced and proclaimed peace to you, which were far off, and to them that were nice. You are far away from God as a gentile, as a sinner, but now Jesus the Savior has died, and has returned away from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, everything that separated you from God, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 119. Psalm 119. I read from verse 165. Psalm 119. Verse 1, 6, 5. Great peace are they which love thy law. Do you love the word of God? Of course, that's why you are here tonight. What kind of peace are you going to have? Great peace. Your mind will not be disturbed. Your heart will not be disturbed. Whatever news you hear, 
that this is happening, that is happening, the word of Christ will supersede every other news in your heart in Jesus' name. Great peace are they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall defeat them. Nothing shall destroy them. I'm praising God for you. I'm rejoicing before the Lord on your behalf. Nothing will destroy your peace. I say, chapter 26. I say, chapter 26. I read from verse 3. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. The disciples were disturbed. They didn't have perfect peace at that time because they were looking at the wind. They were looking at the, at the waves. They were looking at the storm. But that will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Your mind will stay on the Lord. Trust ye in the Lord how long? Trust ye in the Lord how long? When you hear noise on your street, trust ye in the Lord forever. When you hear something is across the road, trust ye in the Lord forever. When bad news is coming from the office, trust ye in the Lord forever. When your wife is pregnant and she's saying, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that, trust ye in the Lord forever, you will not be ashamed. For in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Look at chapter 48, Isaiah chapter 48, Isaiah chapter 48, I'm reading from verse 18, Isaiah chapter 48, reading from verse 18, O oh, that thou art hearkened to my commandments, then at thy peace being as a river and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Did somebody say amen? amen? Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 6. Philippians 4 verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. Be disturbed by nothing. Be worried about nothing. It says be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Calmly, quietly, Assuredly, without any shadow of doubt, when any problem arises, go to the Lord like a son, like a daughter, not like a slave, not like an orphan. Don't go with anxiety. The storm is rising. Carest not thou that will perish? This is what I've been fearing, and it has come now. Carest not thou that will perish? How will I come out of this? How will this now be resolved? How will this problem be solved? Don't go to God like an orphan. You are not an orphan. Your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. Make your request known unto God. And the peace of God. Verse 7. This is yours. I said, this is for you. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, brethren, 
whatsoever things are true, like the word of God, whatsoever things are honest, like the promises of God, whatsoever things are just, like the pronouncement of Christ, whatsoever things are pure, like the word of God that has been tried with fire, refined with fire seven times, whatsoever things are lovely, like the promise of the Lord, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Don't think on the storm. Don't think on Satan. Don't think of what your enemies are trying to do. Those things which ye have learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And tell me the rest of that verse. Let me hear you. The God of peace shall be with you. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. Romans chapter 16, verse 20. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Make it personal. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under my feet shortly. Say it with assurance. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under my feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Point number three. We come to Mark chapter four. Mark chapter four. And we're reading from verse 39. Mark chapter 4, verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And your wind ceased. And your storm ceased. And there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful, brother? Why are ye so fearful, sister? My boy, my girl there, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Jesus has power to calm every storm in your life. He has power to give peace, perfect peace. He has power to forgive. If you are troubled by the sins you have committed in the past, he has power to forgive, he will forgive you. He has power to set free from sin. He has power to convert the soul. Power to cleanse the soul. He has power to crucify self and keep you and keep me and keep us sanctified. He has power to heal. That burning fever in your body, it will heal you tonight. And he has power to keep us healthy. He has power over your sorrow and it will grant you real joy he has power to deliver it will make you more than a conqueror more than a conqueror i said more than a conqueror he has power to make you triumphant in all situations you will win you will overcome he has all power in his prevailing power and he is irresistible. Your prayer tonight is irresistible. The promise tonight is irresistible. And the goodness of God in your life tonight is irresistible. Power. Somebody shout power. And that power is for you. 
Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. Matthew 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. Look at Mark chapter 13, reading from verse 24. Mark chapter 13, I'm reading from verse 24. But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. But look at this, in the midst of all that, then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with, tell me, great power and glory, even when the Antichrist is at his highest performance. Christ will come in great power. Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 43. Luke chapter 9, verse 43. And they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. They were all amazed at the mighty power of God. His power will surprise you. When he solves your problem, his power will amaze you. But while they wondered everyone at all the things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Everything you have heard tonight about his power, about the peace he brings us, let this thing sink deep into your heart. Nothing will shake you. Nothing will move you. Luke chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 36. Luke chapter 4, verse 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits. What happened? And they come out. They have to come out. Anything tormenting your life, tonight it will come out. Anything harassing your family, tonight it will come out. John chapter 17 verse 2. John 17 verse 2. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. No exception. No exception. Anyone hearing the word of God tonight? You're part of the all flesh and he has given him power over all flesh. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. He'll give you everlasting life. Acts chapter 10 Verse 38, Acts chapter 10, verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, with power, with power, who went about doing good and healing some of them and healing many of them. Healing, tell me. All that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Lord is with you tonight. And he's going to grant that power. He's going to manifest that power. Power for salvation, yours in Jesus' name. Power for sanctification, yours in Jesus' name. Power of the Holy Ghost, yours in Jesus' name. Look at Hebrews 
chapter 1, Hebrews chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 3. Hebrews chapter 1, reading from verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, upholding, tell me, upholding, tell me, he must uphold you. The hand that upholds the whole universe is mighty enough and powerful enough to uphold you. It will uphold you in Jesus' name. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he had by himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Tonight, as we have heard the word of God, that word of God will be fulfilled in every life. As we personalize the word of God, and I say, passing over to the other side, that's for me, it will answer your prayer tonight in Jesus' name. As we believe the word of God, that Christ is greater and higher, more powerful, than any opposing force in our lives against our lives. As we believe tonight, it is done in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 4, verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. Don't consider the storm. Don't consider the wind. Don't consider the persecutor. Don't consider the enemy. Abraham did not consider his own dead body when he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The promise has come to you tonight. You will make progress. You will get to the other side. Your boat will not sink in the middle of the sea. You will not be powerless at the time when you need to stand up in strength and power because you do not stagger at the promise of God through unbelief. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. I am strong in faith, giving glory to God. I am strong in faith and I'm giving glory to God. In the midst of your storm, you give glory to God. In the midst of the persecution, you give glory to God. In the midst of the storm, you give glory to God. Verse 21, I'm being fully persuaded. Being fully persuaded. Somebody there tonight is fully persuaded that this storm will come to an end. Somebody tonight is fully persuaded, I am going to get to the other side. Somebody tonight is fully persuaded, peace be still, there will be peace in your family. And be fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able, 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 able able also to perform is able to quiet in the storm is able tonight is able to silence that enemy is able tonight is able to save your soul is able tonight is able to heal your body is able tonight is able to quiet in and stop that demon from harassing your child is able tonight. Tonight is able. I said tonight is able. Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Reading from verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or see, according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in our church, in the church, 
by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. It is finished. I said it is finished. Say that amen again. Let me hear you. Rise up and receive from the Lord peace in your heart, peace in your soul, peace in your spirit, peace in your community. Fear of sudden death, go in Jesus' name. The fear of perishing, go in Jesus' name. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. He's able to save. If you're a sinner, it will save you. He's able to deliver. If you're oppressed, it will deliver you. He's able to set free. If any sin has been so strong, binding you like a cord, and you wanted to be free and to have dominion, and you could not. You know about his power tonight. You do not stagger at the promise of God. He will deliver you. Whatever the name of the sickness, whatever the name of the oppression, open your mouth and tell the Lord and say, Lord, I believe you tonight. Your God is able. No, you will not die of that sickness. You must still get to the other side. You'll not die in that pressure. They put you in the pressure cooker. The lid will fly off. Peace in your heart today. Peace on your mind today. Peace in your soul today. You cannot perish with Christ present in your heart. Tell him. He told his disciples, those disciples who are believers, be a believer, turn away from sin, turn away from evil, and belong to Christ wholeheartedly, without any reservation. He died for you on the cross of Calvary. And this promise is for those who are following him. You are saved and you are following the Lord. Then he tells you, let's move on. We are going to the other side. His blood will cleanse your soul. His blood will purify your heart. You pass to the other side from unrighteousness to the side of righteousness, from ungodliness to the side of godliness, from weakness to the side of strength, from fear to the side of faith. Let us pass over. Onto the other side, from defeat to the side of victory. Pass on, move on to the other side, from shallowness to the depth of his strength. Let's move on, let's pass on to the other side. Look at your life. Don't remain in the same place. Just say it's the storm. It's the wind. It's the wave. It's the sea. It's the economy. It's the challenge of life. It's this, it's that. Nothing will stop you. Move on to the other side. Christ's word infallible. 
Christ's word irresistible. Christ's word irreversible. He has said it. It must be done. To the other side. Don't stay there. To the other side. Don't continue crying. Come to the other side. From weeping to laughter. To the other side. From sadness to gladness. To the other side. From opposition to the side of opportunity. Come to the other side. Nothing will stop your journey halfway. Move on. Move on into strength. Move on into power. Move on into victory. If you have not been saved, let this moment be the moment of your salvation. Call upon him. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call upon him. Whosoever cometh unto me, I will in no way cast out, reject. He will receive you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That's your ticket to heaven. Don't just come to the Bible study without having assurance of getting to heaven. Whosoever will, let him come unto me and drink. Whosoever, whosoever, prodigal son, come back home, he receive you. Prodigal daughter, come back home, he'll receive you. Are you a runaway Jonah? Prodigal Jonah, prodigal backslider, now there's storm on the sea, and you're battling with the storms of life. Call upon the Lord, He answers prayer. He will restore you. He'll give you righteousness, redemption, blot away all your sins. He'll reverse your backsliding. Come back home. It's a loving, tender God. He'll forgive you. Is the master of the storm, the master of the waves, the master of the troubled sea, is the prince of peace. He'll give you peace. Tell him, don't let him pass you by. Don't let him pass you by. Cry aloud. Call upon his name. The Savior. His healer. His sanctifier. His deliverer. Is the baptizer and the Holy Ghost. The power of God in man.
if you ask he'll give you what you're asking more than what you're asking look up to him prince of peace there's peace in salvation there's peace in his sanctified heart There's peace when the Holy Ghost, like a dove, abides in your life. Peace. There's peace when he bruises Satan under your feet. Abide in peace. Peace like a river. Perfect peace, peace that passes understanding, peace available from Christ, purity, sanctification, holiness available from Christ, power, Holy Ghost baptism to be a witness. An effective witness available from Christ. Peace in your family. Peace at home. Peace in the community. Peace in the nation. Peace. Peace. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> Victorious children of God, in Jesus' name we pray. Your storm is over. The winds are calm. Your family is peaceful. Your insecurity is gone. You will not die young. You will not die in the storm. To the other side. To the other side. Joy has come. Victory has come. Progress has come. Out of storm, we come into the power of God. Where is she there? Where is she there? Tonight is the turning point in your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because Jesus, our Lord, our Master, our Savior, our Redeemer, the one that never lost any battle, is still alive today. And he's right here. And has assured us, whatsoever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we lose on earth is loosed in heaven. And if two of us shall agree as touching anything, that way as it shall be done. Today, I silence the enemy in the life of everyone in Jesus' name. The storm has come to an end in your life in Jesus' name. And as many have, as have called upon the Lord to be forgiven, receive your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Those who have asked the Lord for salvation, receive your salvation in Jesus' name. Purity of heart, peace in your soul, power in your life, receive in Jesus' name. Lord, you're still the master of ocean, of waves, of the sky, 
and of the sea. And whether the storm is coming from men or coming from demons, when you say, peace be still, it is all over. I pronounce in the life of every child, every boy, every girl, I pronounce in the life of every man, every woman, in the life of every brother, every sister, in the life of every member, every minister, peace in your life in Jesus' name. Peace in your family in Jesus' name. And that fever that is burning in your body, be healed in Jesus' name. Incurable disease, go away from our midst. Lord, set your people free. Put their feet on solid ground. Come over now to the other side. Brother, come over to the other side. Sister, come over to the other side. Boy, girl, come over to the other side. There's sunshine on the other side. There's victory on the other side. There's joy on the other side. There's sinking on the other side. There's deliverance on the other side. There's dominion on the other side. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the side of victory and dominion in Jesus' name. Lord, fulfill each in every life. We well, thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 